All right, some rules. There's the off bow, the Paul exclusion principle, and the Huns rule. These are the three rules that you should have an idea about. Now first, off bow. So start filling with the locations with the lowest energy first. So for instance, if you have to put, uh, I don't know, 20 electrons in an, ele in an, in an atom, you're going to start with the 1s, and once that's filled, then you're going to go to 2s, once that's filled, you're going to go to 2p, and so forth. Now this is pretty self-explanatory until you get to the the three or the third energy level. You do 3s, then you do 3p. You think you do 3d, but you actually don't. 3d has more energy than 4s. So we're actually going to, right after 3p, we're going to fill 4s, then we're going to fill 3d, then we're going to go back to 4p, then it's 5s, then it's 4d, then 5. And it gets really crazy, especially when you start throwing s in there. So you always have to fill with the lowest energy first, and that's why it gets crazy and starts jumping around, because we want to fill the lowest guys first. Use the periodic table, and that should help you guide you through this, this, uh, this sequence, especially when it starts getting out of order. All right, Paul exclusion. Exclusion, meaning any more than two electrons get excluded, and if they're in the same orbital, they have to have opposite spins. Hun's rule is kind of like the Monopoly rule. If you play Monopoly right, you shouldn't build until you have all three. Hun's rule, same idea. You can't double up until you have one in each orbital. So if you're dealing with P, you've got the three P orbitals, you've got to put one in each before you start doubling up. If you're dealing with D, even if there's only one electron, you still have to draw all five uh, lines out if you're doing the orbital or electron diagrams. But anyways, let's say that you had eight electrons in the Ds. One, two, three, four, four, five, then you can start doubling up six, seven, eight. So always put one in each before you double up. All right, let's actually write some electron configurations. So when you see uh, a problem like this, double check if it says electron configuration, you're going to be doing the 1s, 2s, and so forth. If it says orbital diagram or orbital notation, then you're going to be doing the arrows. So pay attention to what you're being asked. Don't mix it up. All right, here's chlorine. Chlorine's over here, and chlorine is element number 17. I also know that it's in the P block, and it's in the third period, one, two, three. So it's going to end in 3P and 3P, one, two, three, four, five. It's going to end in 3P, five. So I'm going to keep going until I get to 3P, five. So I write 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3s2, and then 3p5. And if I add, just to double check, if I add all these little numbers up, 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10, plus another 2 is 12, plus another 5 is 17. Then I know that I've done this correctly. Here's iron. Iron's next. Iron's element number 26. It's got 26 total electrons. It's in the D block, and it's in the 1, 2, 3, 4th row, but D is always 1 behind, so it's going to end in 3D. And then I just count 3D 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's going to end in 3D 6. So I'm going to keep going until I get there. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. So 3P6 would put me right here at Argon. Then I go from Argon to here, 4S, so I write 4S2. Then, after calcium, I hit the D block, and now Ds are one behind, so these are 3D right to here, 3D6. So 4S2, 3D6. Now, draw the orbital diagram for the following element for sulfur. So I find sulfur, sulfur is right here, it's right before chlorine, so I know that it's got 16 electrons. I know it's going to end in 3P4, because it's right before uh, chlorine. So I'm going to start drawing lines and labeling them all. Fill that. Now that that's filled, I can go to the second energy level, fill the first orbital. Then I'm going to go to the second energy level, the P sublevel, so 2P. Put one up, one up, one up, one down, one down, one down. Up to this point is 10 electrons. I still have more, so I go to 3S, one up, one down, that's filled, that's 12. Now I go to 3P, one, two, three. I draw my lines, and then I do one up, one up, one up, one down. That's 3P4. So put Hun's rule, put one in each, and then you double up. So there's your correct orbital diagram or orbital notation for sulfur. Pause it if you need to so you can look at that. 
All right, so it says, what do the following elements end in? What's the final energy level, sublevel, and superscript? So we're going to find barium. Barium's over here. It ends in the S block. Then it's 6. It's period 6, so it's 6S. Six and then 6S1 would be this group. 6S2 is over here, so it ends in 6S2. Germanium is right here, so it's in the P block. It's in the 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's 4P. Whatever row I'm in is good for the S's and the P's. So it's 4P, and then it's the second column over, so 4P2. Where's cadmium? Cadmium's right here, so it's in the D block. Now, cadmium's in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th row, fifth period of the periodic table. However, D's are always one behind, so it's really 4D, and it's in the last D, so it's D10. So 4D10. And then radon, way down here, is in the P block. It's the last column, so it's P6. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's 6P6. Okay, so you should be able to use the periodic table to predict what they're going to end in. Now, it says use the abbreviator to the noble gas shortcut method to write the electron configuration for, for the following elements. Now, nobody wants to write out all this stuff, so we're going to be using shortcuts. Now, the catch with the shortcuts is you always have to go backwards to the noble gas that comes before it. So if you're, if you're looking at aluminum here, aluminum's element 13, in order to find the noble gas that comes before it, you have to go backwards, 12, 11, 10. So it's going to be neon. So write neon in brackets. These are not parentheses, they're brackets. And then you start at the beginning of the row. Whatever row it's in, you start at the beginning of the row, and you pick up from there. So this would be 3S2, 3P1. Palladium, element number 46 is over here. That's in the D block. So you're going to go backwards till you hit the noble gas that comes before it, So which is krypton. That takes care of 36 of our electrons, so we don't have to worry about anything up to the 36 mark. Then we start right here at the fifth energy level. So we write 5s2, and then we're back one into the Ds. 4d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 4d7. So 5s2, 4d7 for that element. And that's it. So be able to use a periodic table to write electronic configurations, to do shortcuts, to predict what they're going to end in, and so forth. All right, next video, we'll actually take a look at the periodic table.